You can see that Dallas and Pittsburgh at home then on the road to Indianapolis and Washington. That'll get your attention. You betcha. Leftwich. Looking. Looking. Going to run. And out of bounds. And run out of bounds by Daryl Reed. There's Maurice Drew. Looking quite a bit different than when we saw him in the preseason. Yes, One thing his eyebrows have grown back. <laughs> Just a really likable kid. Weren't you impressed when we sat out with him? This one of those personalities. Part of the rookie hazing ritual. He had dreadlocks. And they said, well, we're not going to cut your dreads. I'm going to shave your eyebrows. Gee, thanks, guys. Second and six. Leftwick escapes the first pressure, Jeez. but not the second. Look how quickly Dwight Freeney got around the corner. Again, we talked about this is right into the Colts' wheelhouse. Dwight Freeney gets a jump on the ball. Watch him go at the top. He is around Khalif Barnes so quickly that Leftwich has, he doesn't even get a chance to look downfield. Third and seven. Jacksonville, eight out of 14 on third down. Freeney and Mathis just switched sides. Leftwich throws incomplete, under pressure again. And now I think it was Mathis. Again, I think going against, was he working against Barnes, the left tackle again? Yep, that time he beat him to the inside. Oh, and Chris Naoli. Ooh, you can see he never saw that coming. They fell right on the back of his leg. Naoli came into this game nursing a sore knee anyway. Oh, and that is how you see offensive linemen get hurt. It's not the guy they're working against. There's so much traffic going on all around you. It's somebody else that falls on your leg when you don't see it coming. Again, there's Chris Naoli there on the left, and it's and it's Robert Mathis who spins around after getting left which and falls right on his left leg. Naoli at 6'3, 330 pounds, spent his first five seasons in New Orleans. This is his fifth year in Jacksonville. Remember, he got drafted by Mike Ditka, who was the coach of the Saints at the time. Did you see Ricky Williams is back in action in the Canadian football? His, I guess his broken forearm has mended. Well enough for him to pick up I think something like 57 yards rushing. Nick Saban last week and talking to him. Weren't you surprised to hear him basically talk about well, apparently Ricky's welcome back with open arms in Miami. Fourth and seven. Drew is back in the lineup. Leftwich over the middle, a bullet inside the 10 yard line to Reister. Three Colts all around George Reister. Take a look at this precision pass. Cato June comes floating across the front. Well done by number seven. 345 to play. Leftwich and pull away. Into the corner of the end zone, Cortez Hankton was battling Marlon Jackson. It'll be second and ten. Second and goal. Three forty-three to play here in the fourth quarter. If Jacksonville gets this in for a touchdown, a lot of this game remains. Jags, Jags have what? Two timeouts left? Yep. 11th play of this drive. Play clock down to five. To two. To one. Leftwich pulls it down. Now throws. It is incomplete. 
Back of the end zone, Ernest Wilson. We've talked about the height advantage that the Jaguars enjoy with these receivers, and Ernest Wilford goes 6'4", but he couldn't come down with it. Well, it's, it's nice to have tall receivers, but you can still overthrow them. He's wide open, and that ball just sails on Leftwich. That, 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 that ball was just thrown too high. That could have been a pretty easy touchdown if he puts it down more by the numbers for Wilford. Third and goal. Play clock at three. Left foot, all kinds of time. Drew, touchdown! His first NFL touchdown. The rookie out of UCLA with the good hands, and he's going to keep that football. And now, all of a sudden, anyone in this stadium who thought about leaving is changing those plans. Again, good pass protection. This time his line kept that full pass rush off of him. And the rookie Bethea jumped a little bit too far to the outside, and Drew took advantage of it. The kick is good. 3.32 to play in regulation. And the Jaguars close to 21-14. And we remind you, coming up on the Subway postgame show, join J.B., Dan, Shannon, and Boomer for all the latest NFL scores and highlights. It's all coming up on the Subway postgame show. And what we've seen from the updates from J.B. in New York, they are considerable. Okay, decision time. You have two timeouts left. I'm talking about an onside kick. Now, you would say you got two timeouts left, the, the two-minute warning. That's three stoppages of the clock. All of that stuff says kick it deep. On the other side, Peyton Manning is the quarterback and the offense on the other side of it. That's got to figure into the equation here in what Jack Del Rio's kick, thinking about what to do here. Conventional wisdom here is always kick, kick, kick it away. Yeah. But you got to think to yourself, am I going to get it back? Well, I'm this thinking I'm thinking if you kick it short, if you onside kick and you don't recover, yeah. you've done Peyton Manning a favor. You got a great defense, no question about it. Well, but, it's, but it's also Peyton Manning. It's, I, I would kick it deep, but I'm saying it's just it's food for thought. Here it is, Dan. Three and a half yeah. minutes to play, and we come down to the main focus of this game, yeah. which is the Colts offense against the Jacksonville defense. That's right. And to this, you know, to this point, his defense has played well enough, I think, to give him confidence to kick it deep. Terrence Wilkin, a yard deep in the end zone. And is oh. buried back around the 10-yard line. Montel Owens, a rookie out of the University of Maine, makes the big special teams play, and that's where the Colts will start. Well, that's how you get downfield. You slice and knife through the coverage. And then when you get there, be under control, form up, and put the shoulder and take him down. And right now, we're looking at a football game where the difference in this game is Terrence Wilkins and that punt return. The Colts averaging 34 and a half points a game coming in today have scored just 21. They've been averaging 421 yards a game. They've got 259 on the board. Darrell Reed in the lineup again as a blocking back. And this is Rhodes. And Rhodes stood up at about the 13-yard line. Well, there was a good illustration of Dominique Rhodes with two hands on the football. He looks, looked like he went to the Woody Hayes School of covering it up. Clock continues to move as we come up on three minutes to play. And as you notice, Peyton goes back to the huddle. They will not be snapping the football with much time left on the play clock. He'll milk this thing for everything. Rose. for Jacksonville. That is, that is a tough one for the Jaguars. Boy, you love to protect the lead by putting the ground on the 
putting the ball on the ground for a couple of plays and hammering out a first down. Dallas Clark with a good block there for Dominique Rhodes. That is a feel-good moment for an offense. And now Jack Del Rio has to start thinking about burning timeouts on defense rather than saving them for his offense. Two minutes to play in Indianapolis. And now the clock stopped at 2.03. So Jack Del Rio uses a timeout here and then gets another stoppage of play after the next offensive run. We didn't know the nature of this game, Dan, how it was going to go, other than you just knew it was going to be a close game. No, you, well, you know, history told us that. Plus, you know, what are we talking about here? We're talking about a team that last year was 14 and 2 against a team that was 12 and 4. Now, you, you know, these are a couple of the elite teams in the league and it has not escaped the attention of the Jaguars that of their four losses during the regular season last year two of them were handed to them by the Colts right and they realize if we would just split that means we're both 13 and 3 and then look at that we go to tiebreakers to figure out who wins the division and that you know that's if they just could have won that 10 to 3 game up here all of a sudden we're now we're looking at two 13 and three teams and everything's different. First down. Rose. Maybe a yard and that'll take us to the two minute warning. Two minutes to play in Indianapolis. The Colts hanging on to a one touchdown lead. Yo, yo, what are you up to Saturday night, huh? I'm not exactly sure, but since I'm the new SC, the element designed to kick it with the city dweller, I'm sure to be something sick home slice. You should hit up the club. I'll be uh, laying it down on the ones and twos. You spin. You're talking to the world famous DJ Underground? I got a little pair of earphones and I'm all like... <laughs> yeah, that's fresh. But I thought there were certain things a DJ needed. Like a neck. You know what? Just for that, you can wait in line with all the ugly people. Hey! Over here. Why don't you switch to our network? We're just like them. Are you reliable? Excellent question. How about for email or downloading music? Why not? Only one wireless network is America's most reliable for calls, downloads, and emails. That is a problem, and we are working on it. Verizon Wireless. It's the network. Coach, Coach, what do you know about this new Coors Light Silver Ticket promotion? Excuse me, I, re repeat that again? Coors Light is giving away NFL tickets. <laughs> they do things that you don't see every day. But Coach, what's the point of the Silver Ticket promotion? It's all about winning. Yeah. Look for the official entry code inside specially marked packages of Coors and Coors Light for your chance to win NFL tickets, even Super Bowl tickets, and more. Coach, I am freaking out about this Silver Ticket promotion. You have to learn to handle it. the 25 to the 27 and there is a flash of bodies at the 27 yard line go back and listen to that you could hear that one all the way up here I'm sure could. I think uh, Dion Grant responsible for maybe the most noise in that tackle so now Peyton comes over to talk to Tom Moore and try to figure out what do we do here to pick up a first down if they don't, Jacksonville will get the ball back. Jacksonville uses its third and final timeout. While we have a moment, we'll remind you next Sunday, LaDainian Tomlinson sparks the Chargers against Ray Lewis and the Ravens. And in the nightcap, Tom Brady and the Patriots take on Carson Palmer and the Bengals. Check your local listings beginning with JB, Dan, Shannon, and Boomer on the NFL today, right here on the home of Super Bowl 41, CBS Sports. Byron Leftwich hoping he gets another shot. Well, if they stop them here, he most certainly will. Third and six. Rhodes, left side. And he's nailed at the 
25 yard line. Daryl Smith played off the blocker and made the stop. So the Jaguars are going to get the ball back with somewhere around a minute and 10 seconds left. They'll have no timeouts. Then Paul Spicer got upfield and pretty much took that thing away, and Daryl Smith just had to come in with a relatively easy cleanup. Alvin Pierman is deep. And Hunter Smith, who has done a terrific job of kicking the ball all day long, will get this one away from about his own 15 yard line, and we get a whistle and a timeout. Timeout, Indianapolis, third and final team timeout so will be a 30 second. That's timeout. all the timeouts remaining for each side. And we have a minute seven on the clock. There will be plenty for the coaches to talk about after this game. Oh, yeah. For the Jags, well, for the Jags, you know, it might be a celebration. I mean, who knows? This is uh, this is the National Football League. They're going to get, you know, bar. I'm not sure what kind of a punt it will be, but an average punt will give the Jaguars decent field position. Certainly, the lack of timeouts is a problem. But we've seen touchdowns scored in this league in less than a minute quite often. Let's see if Hunter Smith is going to give Perriman a chance to return this. Perriman at his own 25 yard line. Here comes the rush. And he kicks it towards the sideline. And that's not going to be a good kick at all. Boy, they're going to keep marking this baby up. There's the 40, there's the 42. Right about the 42 yard line. Pretty good field position for Leftwich with one minute remaining on the clock. That's a 33 yard punt. Had the right idea about not wanting to give up a return, but I think he might have sacrificed a little too much yards. Ten late comebacks in his young career for Byron Leftwich. Well, we've got the tall receivers, but not necessarily Blazers, with the exception of Matt Jones. But now we're going to have Freeney and Mathis. They're going to look like they got rocket boosters on their back. The veteran safety, Bob Sanders, is not in the lineup for the Colts, but the fan, the rookie, has played tremendously well today. Left wing, over the middle, almost intercepted by Gilbert Gardner. It'll be second and ten. Uncontested. Gilbert Gardner just can't pull it in. He jumped that route, read it the whole way, left foot, left which locked in, and he was all over. Chris Naoli, who limped off the field, is back at right guard for Jacksonville. Second and ten. Good news there. Looking deep down the middle of the field, intercepted. Mike Goss to the 35 and out of bounds. Oh, and you've got to wonder, Greg, if Byron Leftwich would have put some air under that football. What might we have seen? Six interceptions all last year. Thrown by the Jaguars quarterbacks. That's the fourth this season for Leftwich. He gets great protection, a chance to pump, and then step into the throw. But he had Reggie Williams a step behind the Colts defense. Watch Williams number 11. Right there. If that ball is to the center of the field, I don't think Mike Doss can make a play on it. I don't think Mike Doss was as deep as he should have been. He gets the pick. Manny but... takes the knee. Jack Del Rio, boy, first quarter, you had to think that he felt and no game is in hand early on, but his team was playing as well as any coach could have possibly asked in this building. The final night, 20 seconds will tick away, and the Indianapolis Colts go to 3 and 0 for Dan Deardorff. 
Greg Gumbel. So long from Indy. The final score, the Colts 21. The Jaguars 14. Let's take you to New York in the Subway Post Game Show. All right, Greg, so Indy wins that one 21-14, improves to three. And he wants after his performance today. John K Orbit is pleased to announce the upgrade of all its satellite services with a new home frequency to give you more control of what you watch. And in order to continue watching your favorite programs without any channel disruptions, you are kindly requested to upgrade your decoders immediately to the new frequency by following these simple instructions from the comfort of your home. For Humex and Philips boxes, all you need to do is follow these set of very simple instructions using your Orbit remote control. Start by pressing the menu button. The Orbit menu banner will appear on screen. Use the arrow keys on the remote control to move to the settings application. Then press OK on the remote control to reach the main settings menu page. Use the arrow keys on the remote control to select channel acquisitions. Then press OK on the remote control. Then a box will appear containing three choices. Choose Orbit Transponder using the arrow keys. Once you reach Orbit Transponder, press OK on the remote control. Then a pop-up box will appear in which you will be asked to create your PIN code. Please key in a four-number personal PIN using the keypad on the remote control. Then press OK. You will be asked again to re-enter your new PIN code for confirmation. Press OK. Always remember your PIN code. Press OK to continue. This will give access to the Orbit Transponder screen, which contains a box that holds the current frequency number. By pressing OK once again, the frequency box will become highlighted in 3D. Once it is highlighted, use the left arrow key on the remote control to delete the old frequency number 11957. Now, you can enter the new frequency number 11054 by simply using the keypad on the remote control. Once the new frequency number is entered, press OK to accept the new frequency. Then use the down arrow on the remote control to select Save and Return. Then press OK. Finally, another box will appear asking if you wish to perform an orbit scan. Accept by pressing the OK button so that the channel scan will happen automatically. Once the channel scan is completed, press OK. Then press Escape on your remote control to continue watching your favorite programs on Orbit. This simple process is for Humax and Philips set-top boxes. For Sajem boxes, please go to the Orbit website, where you can view the Sajem flash presentation or contact your local Orbit dealer. For more details, visit www.orbit.net. Juiced up because their team is rolling right now. Rolling. The Seattle Seahawks, no trouble against the Giants. What do you call this, Terry? A butt whooping. <laughs> 35 to three at halftime. Most points the Giants have given up in the first half since 1948. Got another butt whooping working right here. Philadelphia, Donald McNabb, flea flicker from Cornell. Buck Halder pitches it back. McNabb then hits Reggie Brown. 50-yard strike. Touchdown. I mean, not a touchdown. It's seven and up to this point until there you have it. Westbrook off and running the longest run of his career. 71-yard touchdown. What an effort. All Eagles on the road in San Francisco. Out of the V. 24 to three. That's how he says, out of the V. Villanova, that That's right, buddy. Oh, we just go to St. Louis and Arizona. Let's do that. There's a guy, MVP in this league, Kurt Warner. 
Guy can run this offense. Steps up, guns it right down the middle. Larry Fitzgerald takes it in from 12 yards out, 7 to nothing. Cardinals over the Rams. First and goal on the nine in the second quarter. Mark Bulger back. Nice, beautiful throw to Torrey Holt. Little fly route, go route, take off. Beat somebody. Nine yard strike, 13 to 7. Good ball game there. Rams are over Arizona Cardinals. And look out for the Cleveland Browns. They score the first touchdown by anyone over the Ravens and Break have the up lead the Browns, in the third Kurt. quarter. Bears 3 0 for the first time since 1991. Brett Favre, three touchdown passes, now 4-0-2 in his career, second <coughs> only to Dan Marino. Mark Brunel completes his first 22 passes of the game. That's a new NFL single game record. Steve Smith over the 100-yard mark in his first game as Carolina wins on a late field goal. The Colts have now won 11 straight in the AFC South. Meanwhile, in the AFC North, Ben Roethlisberger 8-2 in his career, both losses to the Bengals. The Jets win in Buffalo for the first time since 02, get their first road win in the division since 04, and Dante Culpepper wins for just the sixth time in his last 20, but against the Dolphins off the snide. And speaking of the snide, the Giants, Jimmy, were almost there, but the comeback mode is already on. Late field well, goal. it made a clutch field goal there at the end. Feely missed three last year. <laughs> clutch. They're coming back, Jimmy. Hey, wait, no, no. Hey, no. Eli's a slow starter. <laughs> Okay, and, and he plays strong at the end. They were behind 24 to 7 last week on the road, won in overtime. So, hey, it could happen. Yeah, they got 20. Seattle's got 21 points off of four turnovers, seven penalties against the Giants. Maybe they'll settle down the second half. You know, I flip it over to the other side. Seattle still not running the ball effectively, but, you know, I, I, I like this kid, Chris Spencer, they stuck in at left guard. He had the one holding call, and the pass protection has been tremendous. A lot was made of Walter Jones versus UCU Manura. UCU Manura has been real quiet, and so is the interior of that off defensive line for the New York Giants. And Here's Seattle's off breaker. Is... Can the Giants do it two weeks in a row? Another second half comeback. We'll find out. Most of you get local. Way to sell it, Bert. Way to sell it, buddy. You are the guy. <laughs>
he had sustained this injury. See, this we don't know. We don't know about this, Bob. And one of the things Bruce Allen said is that, hey, he was hit in a brutal fashion on a play where Pat, uh, uh, roughing the quarterback was not called in the fourth quarter. So the Bucks right now do not know when this occurred. Okay, J.P. Peterson of our Tampa affiliate WFLA is outside St. Joseph's Hospital in Tampa. What can you tell us, J.P.? Well, earlier today, Michael Clayton, the Bucks wide receiver, told us that early on in the game, Chris was laboring to get some of the plays out, couldn't get through the plays. Michael asked him if he's going to be okay. Chris said, yeah, let's go. And, of course, he drove him down the field for a touchdown. So, at least according to Michael Clayton, early on, Chris was laboring. But, again, we don't know exactly when that injury occurred. Back to you. JP, thanks very much. And coming up next, we'll bring you highlights from Week 3's key games, including an intense matchup in Pittsburgh between the Steelers and Bengals. We're back in 30 seconds with the games of the day. NASN, the North American Sports Network, a new and exciting sports channel dedicated to the best in live North American sports 24-7. NASN is the best of live NFL, including the Super Bowl Live, up to 175 regular season NHL games and the Stanley Cup Finals, comprehensive coverage of the MLB regular and postseason, and exclusive college football and basketball. With the best daily news, highlights, and analysis, NASN is your channel for the best in live North American sports. Visit NASN.com for scheduling news and information. Hey, it's a landslide. There Brett Favre go. leads the Packers to their first win of the season, throws for 340 yards and three touchdowns, passes 400 career touchdowns, second only to Dan Marino all time, so the Golden Peacock will go to Brett Favre. Let's look at some highlights from a few key games today. We'll begin at Pittsburgh. Big rivalry here. Carson Palmer and company looking for revenge after that playoff loss to Pittsburgh. The Steelers lead by three in the fourth. Cincinnati punts and Ricardo Coakley will muff it. It'll be recovered by Cincinnati's Tony Stewart. Immediately after that Palmer hits Bushmanzada and Cincinnati is in front. Later Pittsburgh fumbles on a play from scrimmage and Palmer goes right back to Bushmanzada. Leaping juggling catch for the touchdown. Four TD throws for Palmer. Cincinnati wins it. Let's go to San Francisco where Philadelphia won a revenge after that heartbreaking loss last week. Frank Gore is going to fumble the football and all of a sudden Mike Patterson's going to come out of the pile. We see this every week. Sterling, who's he look like? The no, bus. No, no. <laughs> he looks exactly no, like the no, bus. He even cuts back like the bus. Watch no this. A very slow cut back. Look at that. There it goes. And Philadelphia goes on to the route. Three touchdowns for Brian Westbrook in that one. Not a good day for Eli Manning, especially early at Seattle. He was intercepted three times all told. The two picks will show you, both by Ken Hamlin. Eventually, Manning came back in three for three touchdowns, but by then, the Giants were in a deep hole. Meanwhile, Matt Hasselbeck connected for five touchdown passes. Here's Bobby Ingram. No one touches him. He just rolls in, and Seattle rolls at home. 42 to 30 over the Giants. Chicago at Minnesota. Start of the fourth quarter. Rex Grossman. Bill advised pass picked off by Antoine Winfield. Touchdown. Minnesota has the lead. But later on in the fourth, Brad Johnson and Chester Taylor will fumble the exchange on a hit by Tommy Harris. The Bears recover, and Grossman cashes in just under two minutes left. 24 yards to Rasheed Davis gives Chicago the win. Their first 3 0 start since 1991. And next Sunday, what do we have for you? Ooh. Seattle, which Good scored 42 today and was the highest scoring team in the whole league last year against the Bears with that Monsters of the Midway defense at Soldier Field. It's that old, it's that old good versus evil. When you look at evil, it's the defense of the Chicago Bears and it seems like now the Seattle Seahawks are getting their stride so this is a road game for Seattle they're going to get into Chicago on Friday they're going to be very excited because this is a good litmus test to see where this football team is the Chicago Bears eked out a win today versus the Minnesota Vikings they have got to be reeling because Rex Grossman turned over the football we saw what Seattle's defense does they can turn you over as well. all right that's next Sunday immediately heads second half of oh, tonight's boy. game and I don't like what I'm seeing out of Tom Brady you can see the body language he looks down I don't know if it's Dion Branch but to some extent this offense is getting exposed right now the first two games they were able to run the football and this one the running game is being shut down and the passing game simply can't get it done right now Jerome yeah 14 carries 33 yards that's not getting it done this isn't the 4,000 yard Tom Brady offense of last year this is an offense that depends on running the football they can't run the football you're gonna struggle 
Okay, lads, listen up, because this will affect your travel plans for next summer. Tonight, the NFL announced the China Bowl, a preseason game next year in Beijing between the Patriots and Seahawks. It'll be the first time an NFL game will be played in the world's most populous nation. The game will be broadcast on NBC. It will take place on August 8th to mark the beginning of the one-year countdown to the opening ceremony of the 2008 Beijing Olympics. The announcement was made by Commissioner Roger Goodell, along with Patriots owner Robert Kraft and Ren Zhun, a Beijing sports representative. The China Bowl announcement is being noted at halftime in Foxborough tonight. And that ceremony includes an appearance by the five friendlies, as they're called. They're the mascots of the Beijing Games, inspired by the five Olympic rings. The NFL is headed to China. Oh, look at them. Aren't they cute? The NFL is headed to China next summer. Patriots, Seahawks, you know, there's no bus to China. Madden can't make it. You're doing the game, Collinsworth. Get ready. And get ready for the second half from Foxborough after this. This has been...